In the last three to five years, we have seen that cybercrime mature to a level where all the tools and all the techniques are being automated. It's no longer the professional hacker sitting at, the, at home or sitting in a garage trying to hack into a system. We're looking now in automatic applications that take the, uh, the job from, from these professional hackers. So it turns out that almost everyone with some basic IT skills can use these tools, creating the malware automatically, distributing them, collecting the data uh, from the compromised machine, and even sell them. All this process is being automated. It's uh, a very similar to like in an organization when you're starting to have one application to do one job in your finance group and then you have another application in another group. And then at the end of the day, you have uh, automation of all these pro business process. Believe it or not, in cybercrime today, it's exactly the same. So the training in cybercrime is not just the type of malware they're using, but also the tools and the automation of this entire process. And this ex explains why we see all the spikes in the amount of malware and the number of compromised websites and the number of botnets and the size of the botnets. It's not because there are more professional hackers over there. It's because the, the tools they're using, the application they're using, automating it and make it much more simpler than it used to have in the past. The people who are uh, involved in cybercrime today, first, they're coming from all around the world. There's no particular country, region. It's really from all around the world. And these people are not specifically computer science PhDs, and they're not professional hackers. They are, these are people who have some basic IT skills now in the recession time, uh, probably finding some difficulties to find a job. And uh, there are some other region in the world, mostly in Eastern Asia and in uh, Eastern Europe and in Asia where uh, a lot of computer science uh, uh, graduated uh, students cannot find a job. If it's a recession or not recession, this market cannot absorb the number of people that the universities uh, create. And as a result, they turn into cybercrime. They're using uh, tools and applications that they can uh, buy for 100 or $200. And we know almost in a few hours, you can start collect credit card numbers, you can start collect stolen data, and you can trade it online. So today, cybercrime uh, or cyber criminals are uh, the average person with basic IT skills, and there are thousands of them all around the world. Absolutely organized. We, um, we at Finjan uh, researched this, these type of organization and even managed to have communication with them. And they definitely organize. There are people responsible creating the malware. There are people responsible to uh, auction that stolen data. It's all about the volume. Once you reach a, a, a high volume of stolen data, you need more people to help you to sell it, like in any business. You can start your shop by yourself, but once the business is growing, you need more people to help you, and that's exactly what it means. But it also uh, teaches on other things. The fact that so many people are involved in that, it means there's enough money and big money over there. Otherwise, they will go and do something else. From our research, we uh, managed to see some fig to find some figures, but uh, I can see that I can tell that we're saying everything. So I'll use uh, and I'll quote some of uh, law enforcement and some other security vendors some on their report. If I take all these numbers together, we're definitely looking in hundreds of billions of dollars involved here worldwide. Uh, definitely a, a major financial problem is cybercrime today. And there's a lot of um, ways that we found them uh, exchanging or paying one to each other. Um, I prefer not to name companies, but I can say uh, well-known companies uh, dealing with money transfer in this way or another, if they are aware or unaware, but this kind of money is being uh, transferred using these tools. Law enforcement find it very challenging to find the people. It's very easy to find the servers where data has been stored or where the servers are actually do infecting uh, uh, people's computers and shut that server down. That, that's relatively easy. 
The problem in cybercrime is that the problem is global, but the law is local. So even if a, a, a police or any law enforcement in one country want to go after a person uh, that is running a cyber, it's a very, very difficult task. Because on the web, the criminal can be in one country, the server that they're using can be in another country, and they can do the, the crime on a third country. So now just connect all these dots together to find the person, it's a very, very difficult. So we do uh, uh, see reports from law enforcement all around the world that they f do find people, but these are very, very few comparing to the number of people involved in this. Mm -hmm.